I always have to wonder at what point is it swallowing cum and which point is it cannibalism? Uh, if they're over six months old. So remember to floss. That's, that's, that's truly. Okay. You mean 36 weeks, right? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> remember, you're doing this show. <laughs> I am. Oh, hey, everybody, and welcome to Between the Rolls. It's our Tuesday show where we talk inanely about things and prove how intelligent and clever we are. Unfortunately, only two people are really able to do that, and then there's Frank. Uh, speaking of Frank, I'm going to have him do the uh, us on this show. <laughs> follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter thing, because I don't actually know any of those things. Oh my God. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. Hey, if you want to buy our stuff, it's somewhere on here, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. You can get yourself a finely crafted big old dice bag, a duvet shower curtain, and or tank top for your kid. We actually do uh, thongs now, too, and it's great because there's these little, little cup holders that are D20s. Kyle, you're, your you're, D20s. you're wearing it backwards. You're wearing it backwards. Oh, oh oops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> the cup holders go in front. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm hosting. Hey, I'm Kyle, <laughs> uh, uh, the usual DM player. And uh, uh, um, I'm awesome. Let's go around the table real fast. Introduce everybody, despite the fact that if you even watch this show, you should know us. I mean, unless you skip to the good parts where I'm only the one talking, in which case, yeah, you don't really, you're going to skip over these other people anyway. So, uh, 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 <laughs> David, why don't you go first? David, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm right David. now, David. Introduce yourself. Talk about yourself. He's not Carol. Oh, I'm That's sorry. about to say. Oh, I no miss her. Don't force it. Too cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm David, and I'm a D and D D and D enthusiast. So that's pretty much it. So <laughs> great. I'm going to get an equally satisfying <laughs> introduction from our next person, Blake. Blake, would you please introduce yourself? <laughs> I am uh, Blake, and uh, apparently life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and finally, Frank, you already talked a little bit, but actually introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Frank, uh, quasi-standard host of this show and uh, frequent DM on the Saturday show. Uh, if you don't recognize me by now, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you'll have to pardon me. Uh, it's a Kyle show. I have the Adora virus because I adore you for watching us. <gasps> oh, 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 so brilliant. So much love. Social distance. Feel it. Social distance. <laughs> oh, and uh, get a bingo card. Win some free shit. There. Made that plug. Go ahead, Kyle. Okay. Yeah. Bingo. Because the last person to win a bingo got something really cool. So if you win bingo this, this time. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <clears throat> All right. So last Saturday, just to do a friendly recap of what happened, uh, uh, we played the campaign. Uh, new friends, new foes. Uh, obviously, David didn't play. He doesn't like us that much to force himself upon us and have the show. No, he doesn't but, constantly email bombard us like Carol did. That's how she well, wiggled her way into the show. <laughs> Murder Hobo Inc. So easy to join, even Carol could do it. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, oh he'll pay oh, for that man. One, folks. I was about to say, get prepared and be prepared to get blasted with that. Blake, since you have such a way with words, why don't you uh, tell us what happened in general over this past Saturday? Uh, you guys dicked around in town. Uh, Accurate. I, yes. I, rushed, I, I storm chased the undead into town and Manis all got lucky. Ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Frank, you want to yeah, summarize yeah, anything else? It was a fairly uneventful episode, even though there was a lot that was accomplished. That's true, yeah. yeah. It was surprisingly satisfactory. I smoked a cigarette afterwards, uh, mostly because Frank wasn't involved as much as he usually is, so it was a little bit more pleasurable for us. 
I, I've got to say my favorite part of the show was Manise meeting a, the new female Aarakocra and promptly shooting her in the face with a crossbow. That it was, oh, I can't even write shit. Like that. <laughs> well done, well, Chris. Well the done. The dice tell a story. And that's that's what the dice want. The narrative writes itself. <laughs> a bit more of a, an accurate uh, depiction goes. Uh, when we had last left Manise, he was in the port city of Yavl. Uh, Fulton. Fulton? Fuck that. I thought it was... Who's my... Who's, I thought it was Fulton. Look, Rand McNally. Read the map. <laughs> <laughs> Rand McNally was a fictional person just like Betty Crocker in Santa Claus. We're talking about a bird man in Fulton. <laughs> <laughs> I live on Fulton. Uh... uh but uh, anyways, he was in Fulton uh, after leaving his uh, contingent of uh, war clerics uh, investigating the source of the scourge. Hint, it's a topical show. Um, <laughs> uh, where he was joined by a, an old classmate from the academy who identified herself as what's your tits? I don't fucking remember. Uh, he proceeded to shoot her, and then they proceeded to get ambushed by some Tenku, who it was later determined were emissaries from the gnomes, and that means that they're bad because they're working for the gnomes. Uh, Cutscene, I literally do nothing but move from the uh, town that I had saved from the undead to what town are we headed to? You guys are in uh, Rourke. Yeah, to Rourke. That was my that was my day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Taryn, <coughs> Huey, and Ernie uh, get together in Rourke and Grave Rob. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I've been in stealing. But I don't remember what you did. <laughs> Grave Rob! They murdered someone? Who did they murder? They murdered uh, Cola's friend. Oh yes, 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 that's right. No, no, you were you were you were accosted by by Mountain Dew knee high orange grapes. <laughs> uh, uh, companion, the Tiefling warlock who I had previously encountered at the poker tournament and was uh, a, an associate of, of of the of the little midgets. Um, they informed him that there was a box uh, upon Cola's. Body who has since passed away of the disease, and uh, he buried her, and they wanted the box back. He discovered that there was a reward for, for said box, and decided to get ambushed by our by our party. Sure, that's the word we'll describe. <laughs> ambush. That, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> also talk about the further reasonable response from and said party, Frank. He was summarily dispatched with uh, the tavern owner where this incident occurred, fetched a rug, no questions asked, and uh, we leave off with them trying to grave rob from the midget. <laughs> and we also left off with you being stuck between an angry army of the undead and Lord Bushmill and his band of uh, I stout think fighters. I don't know. Either way, uh, two weeks, it's going to be a mess. That sounds like a mess. <laughs> Ky Kyle's busy. So, David, what did you think as a viewer? You're oh, welcome, man. Kyle. I, I loved the grob uh, grave robbing. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> and death in the hallway. That was really, or was it a stairwell? That stairwell. was good. <laughs> stairwell. I, oh, yeah. I would have done more bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Touche. So. And I was surprised by Ernie. I never knew he was so murderous. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Everyone else in the party is a bloodthirsty murderer. Ernie. We can call him <laughs> a, a bastard because he's not, he doesn't watch this show. That's he doesn't care. <laughs> and he's busy get, trying to get moved back to Midwest. Speaking of bastards, Hallie, you suck. No, Heidi. I'm sorry. Heidi. Wow. Heidi, yeah. Jeez, holy oh, shit. You just uh, kicked Jim, over a new, uh, Todd a new and one. It's Bill. Us. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Same difference. Small, tiny, and dragonborn. Look out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Well, to be fair, she hasn't been on the show. She's not watching either. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, hey. You'd deny it if it weren't true. <laughs> she might be. I, I don't I don't get an actual listing of the Kyle Bass Crack does turn off viewers. <laughs> that is true. That, yes. that is true, yeah. That that was about the last time she showed up. She that might is. be blind. Yeah, she might be blind. No, oh, wait, she didn't show up then. That was That was just us three. Yeah, that was just us three, yeah. But she was excluding hosting. David. She was watching after I dipped out on her game for, for you guys. Yeah, because oh. that was part of the uh um charity the trevor that's project. right yeah yes. male at, nudity at the trevor project yeah. probably to be fair I she asked know. me to be nude baking a cake so it wasn't asked. i at least provided one portion of it <laughs> because we wanted to get the next level for you to put your clothes back on and we figured yeah. that would be the quickest and they failed time. didn't they? they they did fail apparently did. everybody likes your butt yeah, but uh-huh. it's a charity uh-huh. event, so we don't really we want to the imply that we were going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I believe it is f- fuck you, Heidi, not fuck you, Hallie. I think that's what he meant. So, oh, Heidi, you got to come back on the show, defend yourself, and pick on before, before, before you can be thoroughly fucked, you have to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've lost control of the show. Oh, no, I was just letting you guys do your thing. Uh, David, did you have anything else to add on that other than the grave robbing bit? No, I cannot beat on I this. would have to say that uh, whoever Dewey's character uh, was uh, did an amazing job in figuring out where to go after murdering the one person who knew where Cola was buried. I, I will give you points for your investigation, not your perception. Your oh, God, it was awful. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, guys, yeah, go back, watch it if you haven't already, because the <coughs> uh, the sounds, the bells of war is coming, which brings us to the topic of tonight, uh, campaign changing events, large size, big game changers for the evening. There, there's uh, a long, black-robed gentleman with a hood and a, and a beaked mask that just walks into town, sits down at the tavern and orders a beer. It's the plague doctor mask, mm-hmm. <clears throat> not the gift oh. mask. Plague doctor mask. Is that who the bad totally guy different. is? Totally different. Is it Spring pestilence? Twenty twenty. No, our our bad guys horn wears elephant tusks or something like that. I don't fucking. Know. Oh come on! I don't know. I, the fact that seven people have already figured out who the big bad is, and I have not, is <laughs> to not be surprising. Fair, everybody else pays one. attention. Yes. That's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I have the memory of a gold. Shiny object. Shiny huh? Oh, object. hey, how you guys doing? Uh, yeah, so tonight we're talking about the uh, big changes to a campaign, the bigger picture, um, world-changing events, usually a turn for the worse. Frank, you have some experience with that. Uh, how do you decide what kind of world-changing event and whether it should actually be campaign-spanning? Ah, uh, great question, Kyle. Scott, I don't drink. think I asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I'll take it from here. Uh, one of the things that I like to use in the Game Changer, especially in this campaign, is we were starting to get into a rut. Uh, the players were kind of a little bit off kilter, and they needed kind of the gentle but firm hand of a kind and forgiving DM to tell them where they need to go. Uh, no, no. Well, that's partial seduction right there. Uh, but for the campaign, I, I knew we were starting to stagnate. And if you feel that you need to do something, uh, it could be a, a big global game changer. It can be the addition of a new player. It can be both in this case, uh, adding Carol, uh, to the mix and hang making. On, hang on, hang on. You, uh, you're talking like you voluntarily chose. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go through my recycle bin and delete like 8,700 emails from her, begging, <laughs> begging to play, begging. 
Uh, and and that I, was actually the limit that you could delete. There were more. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, we're just going to keep talking over you, even though you aren't here. But yeah, with uh, when a game stagnates, you have to make a change as the DM. Period. End of story. Otherwise, you're just going to get into a rut. Your players are going to lose major interest, and then you're going to lose players, and then you've lost the campaign. So when you sense that that's happening, make a change. Speed it up. Do something. Now, when we wrote this campaign, <clears throat> there was always this big threat, but over the course of the 25, 26, 27 shows, the guys got a little bit off track. So this just helps them to solidify that, hey, uh, citizens are dying. You're going to lose your favorite armband and you need to get your ass back into it. Uh, and that is why I went with the plague written prior to the coronavirus. Thank you. I'm like a fucking seer. That, no, that's what I was saying. We've been doing the campaign for a year now, haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Because this, oh, this was episode 27, so it's every like other that. week. So, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, that's that for me, that's when you know, or that's when you start to get the hint that it's time for a change, introduce something new and big. I mean, you know, if you're always fighting goblins, uh, it gets throw in a hobgoblin. Right. <laughs> Throw in a tall version. Uh, yeah. But but that is why I did it. So two points for me. Make it the focus of your campaign or you're in a rut and change it. Uh, in this case, you guys were in a rut uh, and we needed to make a change to keep your interest. I, I think I've done that at least a little bit. Uh, and it was also the focus of the campaign. So that's my two cents worth or two takes. <clears throat> Uh, Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's two good ideas. So Scott, that's two shots. Uh, I, I, sorry, I must have missed it. Only assuming that's only assuming he agrees with you. Oh, that's true. That is very true. Those are two solid points. <laughs> if you don't agree with me, screw you guys. <laughs> you really didn't have much say in whether or not that was going to happen. Which part? The plague. I was going to say, it. you introduced <laughs> the plague at the very beginning. So, yeah. And yeah, no, you were absolutely right. We were getting derailed with a lot of small things and it ended up uh, increasing on itself. And so you increased the plague and all of a sudden it started showing up there. And uh, once in a while I get it right. Which, which was a result of us splitting up. Yes. yes, that's exactly what I, I did have to put the screws to you guys. So, but, uh, it, and behind the scenes, folks, uh, each one of the groups had a very specific goal. None of them have met it. <laughs> so we'll bring them back together and they can do the goals as a team. So I what was the goal? <laughs> you fucked up with my goal. My goal, my goal is crumbled to the ground. Uh, Blake and Carol were headed to Yaddle. No, my goal was to go to the academy. Right, via Yaddle. Uh, no, no, I didn't care by what. I wanted to go to the academy. That's why I burned the academy to the ground. Uh, but Yaddle um, had something. Uh, the Fulton had something. And uh, Battle Keep, which, of course, you guys have already figured out, also holds something. So. Oh, right. I'm um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, I haven't gotten a lot of sleep lately. Uh, when you have the coronavirus, you just bleed out of your eyes and your anus falls out through your left tent. So it keeps you up at night. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing says St. Patty's Day like a prolapsed anus. Keep going, <laughs> Kyle. Right. You're doing great. <laughs> you, joke, you joke. That's been my experience. I agree. I, I, got, right. I got nothing there. We'll take your word nothing. for it. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are your thoughts <laughs> on this topic? <laughs> Since we're changing it tonight, prolapsed anuses, David. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it a... All no, right. they're, they're, called, they're called rosebuds because once it once it escapes the body cavity, it kind of puckers and it like excels. It looks like a little rosebud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I have lost the show. It is official. <laughs> it is I am now rails. admitting it. Uh, Frank, there you go. That's what I thought you'd do. <laughs> okay. 
David, um, what are your thoughts on the large impacting uh, uh, event that takes on a campaign, whether it's the disease, the plague, an undead army? Um, what are your thoughts on it as a player? I know you haven't DM'd much. Uh, we're actually throwing you to the wolves next month, but uh, Frank hasn't told you that yet. Great. What are your thoughts? Um, no, to build on what uh, Frank said, I mean, just... A sense of jeopardy, I think, needs to be the big injection into a game or a campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, if you really want to mess with your players like that, you have a plague that's going in this overall campaign. One of them get infected. You know that. You know this is it. This is this is the reason why we've got to focus on this campaign and drive it forward. And you know because. Like, for example, I mean, my experience was DMing was just wrangling kids, and all they want to do is roll dice and kill shit. But you start issuing a... a... You're above me, Kyle. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but you start doing things like time challenges and start uh, adding a sense of jeopardy to their characters. It... it, it Pulls the focus straight into the game. Uh, other David, things I just... think that is a terrible idea. Frank, write that down. Terrible <laughs> idea. One Ter of the people getting infected. Terrible oh, idea. Carol. Right. Kyle Carol. is infected. <laughs> <laughs> That's C A R O. <laughs> Come on, man! It was you know every story arc in a action movie in the nineties, man. So. <sighs> I'm not familiar with that. I usually try and stay I, I go with these. <laughs> it, 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 it's the 30 year cycle. We're still we're still focused on the 80s. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Speaking of the 80s, here we go. Uh, yeah, mutually assured annihilation. There you go. You could always int introduce a campaign where you have two warring factions. Uh, everything is like a mutually assured annihilation between the two, and every once in a while, something knocks it out of balance. It's just like a Billy Joel song. Exactly. We didn't start this fire, so. Ernie did. Ernie did. Ernie did. Ernie did. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> just, just out of curiosity, uh, 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 mutually assured destruction. If yeah. you have two factions in a world of D and D. What does that look like? I mean, it could be anything. It could be like Red Wizards, um, you know, Zentorum versus Lord's Alliance, something like that. But well, Yeah, but uh, what does it look like? Does it look like a giant fireball the size of the moon? Does someone open up a portal into hell and just unleash demons? I'm, I'm picturing the... I'm picturing Roll a d20 and you know, write oh, a, make a list. There you go. <laughs> so... Um, no, I mean, all those are really good uh, places to start. Like you mentioned, you know, hell on earth kind of thing or, you know, uh, a cataclysm where something is or something is being hurled towards the world, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that I thought of, I mean, I, I just cleaned it off of uh, just current fiction and, and things that I liked. Uh, I thought you, know, you were going to say current events, but yeah, go on. Well, that too. Uh, prof prophecy, you mm -hmm. know, that could be a story storyline to start with, you know, and, you know, a good twist would be to find out that the prophecy is actually being written by one of these factions. They've got some way where, you know, all the shit that they write about is actually coming into play, you know. Oedipus. Yes. No, I did that earlier. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't say you Oedipus. fucked your mother, other what? what? I pissed. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> all right, so we're kind of hitting it with David Blake, yeah, kind of finishing it up. He was talking about um, getting tensions up in the players by infecting one of them, or really just affecting <laughs> one of them and taking their character in go, such go, a way. Go, How go, else go. would you do it? Your, to your question that you had posed to him was shaking up the campaign, shaking up the scenario. Sure. Yeah. Correct? I think yeah. that you're limiting yourself uh, by suggesting that it has to be a negative event. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. That's true. That's true. Uh, Good point. Uh, it, it, especially as far as something like that goes, it could be the cessation of a war. It could be 
a royal marriage that has finally, after years of turmoil, brought these two uh, differing factions into an uneasy peace. Where, a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing? <clears throat> a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing? No, because that's not an uneasy piece. They hated yeah, each other. Like, they killed each other, and then the families killed each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Napoleon Marion, the uh, Napoleon Marion, the Burgundian princess. Like, and it, it's a royal marriage, uh, or, or, or for for that example. But something that is a very, <laughs> it, it, there is a uh, the cessation to the turmoil is. Uh, focused and based and rooted in something that can easily be disrupted or damaged. Like, so let's say, okay. Uh, someone, Make it etchings. Well, no. Those would be, those are already available because the queen is also kind of a, an exhibitionist, but, <laughs> but no, I'm talking about, let's say, uh, the Lord of, Bushwhacked and the and and the uh, countess of what's her tits <clears throat> bury their kids together and now that now they've they effectively merged their huge tracts of land. But nice. let's say should the uh, should the countess's uh, daughter be found dead in their bedchamber, that could very easily be seen as a hostile act on the part of Lord's. Lord Bushwhack or whatever, and and it could it could re reintegrate all of the conflicts and everything tenfold. Uh, so having something that is more of a protection type quest, uh, or, you know, because again, I'm making it something tangible. It could be something like Harry Potter, where they where Dumbledore and Gay Jude Law just like said, okay, now we can never hurt each other. Jude so, Law. <laughs> Which version did you watch? <laughs> the best one, obviously. <laughs> who was the who was the Snape? No, no, no. I'm talking about from Fantastic Beasts. Oh, Johnny Depp. No, no. no what, Jude Law. Dumb, Jude Law and Johnny Depp. Is that okay, the yeah, association okay, yeah. that you're trying to make? Yeah. Yeah, where they were they were fucking each other in the ass. Grindelwald and, and all of a sudden he yeah. impregnated him and outspawned two magic pinky rings and said we can't ever hurt each other. <laughs> they're actually in the uh the plane of ooze which if you guys <laughs> didn't watch the previous tuesdays between the roll you can watch that and find out more about it we've been to the plane of ooze haven't we we've Are also they... been to the plane of oz <laughs> 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 you can find that on several saturdays ago that's episode <laughs> insert episode here but but no, coming back to my point, making it making something tangible that can be stolen, that can be broken, that can be something that's uh, if if your players are getting tired of okay, we're we're constantly going okay. Here's three militiamen, fight them. Proceed. Here's three militiamen, proceed, fight them. Just saying okay, now you're now you're at peace. You're you're at an uneasy peace. Now you're now it's a political intrigue scenario. Uh, Sure. Speaking up all of your situations. But if we're going to keep it topical, because <clears throat> now I have the crew. <laughs> I say I say make it something that was a willful choice on one of the warring parties. Okay. Make yeah. it say say that make it so that the Russians actually did ignite the bomb. Uh, make it something make it something that could have been prevented but wasn't, and then see where your players take it from there. Sure. I mean, at this point, we have something that is potentially even campaign ending if someone in the oh, campaign... Oh, 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 no, my notes went away. Oh, God, my script. <laughs> I need my script. Oh, my we God. We ended the campaign on three separate occasions, if I'm not wrong. Who's that? We all, we've almost ended the campaign on three separate instances, if I'm not wrong. You are correct. Did we? Yeah, episode. I may not have been aware of it. Oz. Uh, well, we had the uh, try game where you guys each did something, and then what's in the box? Oh what's yeah, in the potentially box? almost ended that one, right? Yeah, that that was an actual this shit is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and then, then what would have happened? The entire world would have been taken over by the plague. 
we would have had Carol and David come well, in as get over by the plague. We're gonna dick around and work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. Sure. Okay. So um one of the things that I've noted last, um, we <coughs> certainly had a lot of upping the um Andy. the the what? <laughs> On auntie. Auntie and uncle. Uncle? Your mother's sister. You oh, watch your mouth. He's dead. Boy, we're making this personal now. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Yeah. I mean, gosh. Speaking of personal, uh, fuck you, Holly. Anyway. <laughs> and you too, Jim or Ted or Bill. <laughs> no one liked you anyway to care for your name. No, but uh, over the past few campaigns. <laughs> As we've been playing, we've been getting people who are coughing, people who are hacking. As we speak and start talking to NPCs, we just watched the first one die from the illness. Uh, Frank? We have yet to find a corpse. Actually, there were two. We did dig one up, yeah. <laughs> There's two now. <laughs> well, but did you examine her for, for puncture wounds? They didn't examine shit. Yeah, no, we just got to <laughs> You have, you have one alleged. Okay, but anyway, we're upping the ante of the campaign. We're adding tension. Frank, you did that with coughing, hacking. What else do you have planned? Sure. Uh, okay, like let's go with someone sense? else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, who's the well, big bad guy, by the way, too? Hmm. Well, the big bad guy is evil. Uh, oh. And so far, it looks like you're just fucking around with his minions. And I think yeah, the yeah, other yeah. source of tension is the uh, Lord and Bushmill. Vladimir Ill. <laughs> uh, I, I'm pretty sure the big bad's name is Steve. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably Steve. <sighs> or Stavetta. You know, or Stavetta. stop being a sexist pig, Frank. <clears throat> but yeah, I used, uh, I, I've got two more in the stable. One is Lord Bushmill, who is. Uh, and I like, and honest to God, he was not meant to be an antagonist. He, that he was supposed to give you some good information and get the fuck out of Dodge. That is not what happened. So you have a good person hunting you. So that is an something antagonist, yes. From your perspective, as opposed to a villain, you know. Yes, uh, but I think that adds a lot of good tension to it. Blake Blake's character has seen the other side of the coin and he knows, holy shit, it's about to get real here. Well, so well, no. after the after the resolution of that scenario, we will know, at least I will personally know whether he is actually good or if he's just too <laughs> if he's just some power hungry dickhead. Uh, and actually that that is a good point. So that you guys still have a lot of figuring out to do uh, from my perspective. Uh, and I, I was basing the campaign on hoping you guys would get to ninth level and do old school rules for you uh, original edition guys. Ninth level, you get your lordship and titles and you get lands. Of course, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the land's kind of gone at this point. <laughs> you guys, you guys will get lands somewhere not in Sedellus, I'm guessing. <laughs> Annihilated will be the perfect place for Perpetua. She can be everyone that she's ever met. <laughs> but you, if you've been paying attention, uh, folks at home, uh, you also know that the gnomes are going ape shit, uh, and that introduces yet another problem that you guys have been perpetually peppered with. Uh, you've killed one of them, but there's still a couple more uh, of the gnomes from Torgal Manor. You also have our various NPCs that have graced our halls. Uh, you have Q, who you do not know what he is up to. And you also have... Um, what does she call herself? Prince's character? Yeah, it's... Uh, I had it just a second ago. Yeah, um, but the, but, but the, the 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 BDSM dark elf. Yes, and it's Finestra. 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 So you know you you've gained her enmity. So uh, as a DM, I have a lot of pools that I can draw from, which is awesome. I mean, you guys have allowed the DM a lot of different options, and I plan on 
throwing them at you in random fashion. You're welcome, because I remember you bitching about six months ago that we weren't leaving you any options because we were killing all witnesses. You're fucking welcome. Yeah, I finally got <laughs> some of the witnesses away from you fuckers. <laughs> After Bushmill knocked you out, you landed in the box, and uh, Chris and uh, Ernie had to, had to run from uh, the old bastard. Remember, folks, if they're an old fighter, they're old for a reason, so you best watch out. But yeah, having having that many options to choose from will allow me to keep you guys hopefully on your heels a little bit longer. I like how you totally went the opposite direction of my question, but somehow brought it back just a little bit because and vote for me 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that question about abortion. Let me tell you about taxes. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me about taxes. Taxes are useful. But not bubble. excessively, and everybody should fucking pay their share. Okay, that's my two. People love to bitch about how slow the IRS is, but no tax hike. And I already got my tax return. I'm sitting pretty. Uh, not from this angle. No, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> but from this angle. Oh, oh, yes. oh. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think when a DM has a lot of options, they can go ahead and put a lot of spins on the PCs. Is that kind of the answer you were looking for? Sure. We were asking about uh, umpi- upping tension in a campaign. How more, you more show enemies. that more enemies that you don't even know if they're enemies or not. And you don't know when they're going to show up in a campaign. So, yeah, certainly has Blake and myself, probably more Blake on their toes. Because I'm innocent in all of this. And I have Carol next to me. And she'll talk, <laughs> she'll talk my way out of everything. <laughs> Until she gets the disease and dies. Uh, thank you for that, David. <laughs> hey, she she got her flute from, um, you know, Cola's grave. So, yeah, I'm just and saying. Like from it because she didn't empty the spit valve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts my soul. <laughs> Carol, I'm just driving the narrative. <laughs> a water key, not a spit oh, valve. <laughs> what a blow the freaking flute! <laughs> Hold on. Get, get rid Shut of up, the David. flute. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blake, I was going to ask you earlier. Well, you ended up coming up with a good idea, but how do you um, add up tension in a campaign? How do you get the players to actually understand and kind of feel that same tension that their, uh, their characters do. Well, I, bringing it back to our specific campaign, sure. I, I can kind of go two sides to this by focusing in on specific instances and specific like events and NPCs that are, okay, now we have uh, potentially recurring characters that, that does drive a lot of tension because it's like, okay, well, here's someone that I know I can't just fucking outright kill. But at the same time, if that's your only antagonist over game after game after game after game after game, that you run the risk of that becoming the new horse that you're beating to death. Um, so be being careful about something like that, it's, uh, if, if you don't introduce any other new characters, if you don't make anyone else worthwhile, your characters are just going to constantly be in conflict with the same thing and they're just going to feel like they're putting their heads against a wall. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, if you make it such a raw, touching, whole concept antagonist that they don't feel like it's personal or it doesn't feel like an immediate to them, they'll keep dipping around. Like, you know, I, I'm sure until... Blake, we might be losing you here at some point there. It shouldn't be. You, you were uh, underwatery. Yes. Oh, okay. No, I, okay. I should, I should be fine. You're good now. But... Uh, well, no, I, I've been good the whole time. <laughs> That's why the camera's <laughs> up this way. <laughs> but as far as we know, uh, where, where did I cut out? Your second point. Okay. 
So the second point is if you're if you're big bad, if your antagonist is such an overall all encompassing uh, uh, effect scenario situation, uh, you run the risk of it not being an immediate enough threat to your party to your PCs to actually uh, be considered a call to action. Uh, you're, they'll just be dicking around and trying to put it off until it's something that actually can be personalized. So you were, it's a fine line to walk between drawing from the same well and making the whole world against them. Uh, how I would personally remedy that, I got no fucking clue because I ain't had to yet. <laughs> I would say that I, I, I don't necessarily like the concept that there's just one dogged pursuer. Well, now, actually, you've got Lord Bushmill. Uh, all, got, I have, all I have is Lord Bushmill. You've got the bad guys, and then they, you also have the plague. They, they just they just showed up. I'm not. I don't. I'm talking about before Saturday. Everybody hated you. <laughs> <laughs> you what? You won money from the poker tournament. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go back, go back to Simon's Hollow. We'll see if you got any other. Yeah, <laughs> Simon's Hollow is gone by this point, right? Uh, Whatever the fuck his name is, said that he just loved Perpetual. It, you, you guys will have to ask Chris about his backstory. Uh, I, I actually, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. Oh, Chris had a backstory. Oh, yeah, so it, while, while you guys were doing your thing and separated, Chris actually had a. Uh, we came up with a very solid and tangible concept uh, yeah. <coughs> oh child <laughs> oh no <laughs> but you, you guys have to find that out when you get back to Chris but yeah yeah he's Eric Cocker they only have like a what six week gestation and 20 <laughs> years and they're gone and he nearly killed off uh, what's her face yeah what's her kids yeah, yeah. Hey, no one we can <laughs> care about all right, and David. Yeah, and, yeah, oh. yeah, sure. David, I know you haven't run a lot of DM campaigns yet, but um, as far as we were talking about raising tensions, you again were saying having one of the players infected, how else do you, without directly involving the PCs, how do you get the players to actually feel the tension of what's going on around them? And instead of just saying, oh, it's a game, who cares? Bleep. Um, I mean, to kind of give an example, as I'm going around in town, we have the coronavirus happening, uh, and I personally noted that uh, a lot of people are being a lot more polite, talkative, and that's freaking me out because people are not normally like that, and everyone's being nice and polite, and it's very much a thin veneer is what it feels like, so <laughs> right. that's... It disturbs me a little bit. So how do you kind of get that feeling to go feel the need to, to go get, away or to ramp it up? <laughs> how to ramp up that tension that the players that their characters should be feeling so the players have an idea of how to play their characters. Um hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question. I thought so. Yeah, if that's you like, why you're I'll the host skip to tonight. someone else. <laughs> Oh, uh, God, no. I mean, the, the only thing that I was thinking of before the, the question went into that, I mean, right away I was thinking environmental factors. But, um, wow. Um, yeah, sure. What are the subtle details that you put into the surrounding campaigns as a DM or as a would-be DM to get your players to start feeling that tension, maybe that sense of paranoia, you know, right. there's – everyone start coughing on the players or something like that or yeah i mean that's been a good overarching thing <laughs> it has been yeah yeah um i don't know but where do you go from there after that <laughs> I don't, could okay. be gov could be local government at work you know um people are being so nice because they're mandated to be it's they're a cover it's a cover up everything's fine you know there is no pox <laughs> boo -boo -gow -boo. oh god <laughs> no but uh seriously i mean who doesn't like a little political intrigue i mean with every disaster i mean there there are political implications 
Well, yeah. and as Blake was saying earlier, even a good disaster, a good shame game changer, good shame ganger, uh, uh, will have. I'm the drunk one. I know, right? I'm just drinking water. Well, I mean, it could be. <laughs> well, I mean, it could, like, suddenly it turns into a scorched earth kind of thing. You know, it's just like the government steps in and just say, okay, the best way to fight this virus or this pox is to just um, a culling or something like that. So, I mean, that could be a thing. Or What are the signs that lead up to that? Um, you know? That's I can't figure out what Frank, what Frank is. <laughs> but the government the, puts everybody in a box quarantine and then drills a glory hole. And you know, it's, it's pretty a, much. <laughs> no entry sign that's been tattooed about Dewey's asshole. That what that says? No one will tell me what it says. Yeah. But no, it's like you said. I mean, everybody's going around and suddenly everything is fine. You know, <laughs> and it's that would be disturbing, but yet you know things aren't fine. You know, you you see subtle things happening. Mm -hmm. You know, or suddenly, I don't know, NPCs start disappearing one by one. You know, people you've met, suddenly they're gone. You know? Oh, play and a little bit of a false Hydra situation? Elves, yeah. And I did nothing. Then they came for the elves, and I did nothing. There you go! <laughs> 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 oh man, he's gonna get his Eisner Award for this. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frank, around to you. What small little details do you add in the environment to the PC NPCs to really freak out the players? And you've done the coughing bit very well so far, I think. The uh, undead army, which you know, if Blake didn't end up getting his ass lost somewhere, we wouldn't have known about the undead rising up and attacking a small town where do you go from there or if you want to go after something else you know how well, else I, do you I, it, it, it actually you got all three of you guys have hit it on the head i mean it's just one of those things where okay this is the norm and there is now deviation so whenever that happens uh it, it will ramp up the tension uh, when we had Manise with the elves in the bar and the guards were in the corner, uh, A, I made sure that Manise knew behind him, the guards are looking at him. And then when the one guard came up to him, uh, the dramatic pause as a DM is always useful because it's like, hey, you, I remember you and I got something to say. And you just you just leave it hanging and you wait to get the reaction. And then you say, that cloud was a wagon <laughs> and just boop, break it right off. And okay. Yeah. But there for just a second, Chris knew he's in there and he's going to be screwed over. If those guards say, Hey, you're the asshole that flew over here. So there was just that, just enough hint of repercussion or uh, as David put it, uh, consequence that if if you know it's there and you're waiting for that shoe to drop and your dm's a dick uh that shoe is coming but in this case the shoe didn't drop and it was just huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay i'll wait till the next shoe drops like when the eagle steals the uh magic cart from him yeah. a bitch can i chime in there just on that note that's also a very good opportunity to uh, use your players' player knowledge versus character knowledge against them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely where it helps to ramp up players' tension so that their characters maybe act more in line uh, by metagaming. Especially if you have uh, players that are prone to excessive metagaming, where okay, I know that this is going to happen, but my character has no way of possibly conceiving of that. Carol, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, she watches the show. You put it in chat. You don't say it on the air. 
Come oh on. my gosh! I'm sorry. <laughs> Unless I... you make it a focus of the top <laughs> of the subject, that, that can be just be strictly as as the DM's purview for shits and giggles. Just an, an excessive way to pu uh, punish uh, excessive metagaming. Well, and what you've said is exactly true because everybody who's seen the show or participated in the show knows that the undead evil assholes are coming right for Rourke. What happens if you guys decide to get out of town and they've taken a southerly route and now you guys are running instead of Rourke coming under fire? Uh, they did spot Perpetua and they're kind of curious as to why she's out there on her own um, instead of going after a community that could very well be effectively armed. spotted tailing them. You were in between. Well, well, no, what I would have been spotted was bet was behind them because I was trying to catch their attention ahead of time when I was between them. Now you, you were parallel with the bad guy and then the rest of the group came in. So you were behind the, the secondary group, yeah, I'm, I'm but you were behind, even with the main group. I'm, I'm behind this. When I was spotted, I was behind the second contingent. Of yeah. So Perpetua knows they're headed this way or thinks they're headed this way. Well, they, they, they are headed that way. Whether yeah. they She may or may not tell you guys, but you guys were sitting in. You're right at the table. You hear this. You know that, A, whoever's wearing this animal skull helmet is probably a badass, uh, and now they've brought friends. So what happens next? Do we have the bells of war or do we have holy shit we're being chased hey frank give us an example how do the bells of war differ from the bells of heraldry uh the bells of war will be panicky and you guys will hear it how how, how much how panicky give us an example I want, I'm, I'm, a lot of screaming a lot of screaming and yelling ding 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 instead of dong Dong. There you go, folks. I'm also a master uh, of audio. I just wanted to hear <laughs> Foley artist. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding. Play the Grinch. You'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, yeah, you didn't even get my sneaky in the Red Baron joke. I got it. It was <laughs> bad. <laughs> but yes, that that is, I mean, we all know Rourke's going to uh, fall. Potentially. Or oh, you fuckers are going to get run into the ground. <laughs> well, the size of the military contingent has never quite been established. The size? Yeah. So, so, so. Equal. Okay, it's Lord Bushmill equal. in his tent and those two guards outside of the tent. That's right. Who, who I previously got shit faced with like six episodes <laughs> Lord, Lord Bushmill would have only wiped these guys out if his son Jebediah had not been slain by Carol. Ah, that terrible, awful person. Taryn is a horrible person. She, she really is. is. <laughs> Just murders. Oh. And, uh, and, Taryn, uh, right. Taryn. Taryn. That plays into my whole statement that I will know after, after this situation whether or not he's actually a good guy or if he's just a dick. Eh, potentially. Most you know, likely you will, but potentially, would, if you I, leave, you won't know shit. If he pursues me, I'll know everything. I think Lord Bushmill's going to have his hands full. Unless they chase you and he chases them. Well, no, if, if I, I, my, 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 <laughs> if he's too preoccupied over personal vendetta for the, to focus on the good of the public. Fuck the poor. Oh, wrong movie. Never mind. Well, I, mean, <laughs> yes. I, can, I am Spartacus. <laughs> I could see that being the position he would take. Uh, I, again, Lord Bushmill was never meant to be the bad guy. So, yeah, I think, and see, as he reads stuff into it, that also ramps up the tension because I may think, hey, you know, this was a Boy Scout master and, you know, he never touched any of his scouts. But Blake doesn't like Boy Scout masters, so he hates this fucker. Sure. So, yeah, again, player knowledge versus character knowledge. I don't like these kinds of people, so fuck that guy. Hi, I'd like to help. Would you like to buy a flower? I kill him. 
<laughs> oh wait, that's how you fuckers have handled everything. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> hey, it's still to this day, I, it's I, hey. I, would you like a flower? No, but I'll take your blood. <laughs> I take it you had the first episode and then came up with the name for the show, Murder Hobos. <laughs> was given the opportunity to not die. <laughs> All right, and finally. The last trick in a DM's tool bag for creating tension. Rocks fall, everyone dies. Ending a session at a critical moment. And with that, David, what are your final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts. I mean, on the whole scope? Or on the whole how to, scope. Uh, tension is a good thing. I mean, it's what drives the story. So that that's the way I see it. Like I said, I mean, my DM experience was with kids you had to keep them riveted you know i mean they were literally just like this the whole time so i always like to keep my audience riveted (laughs) exactly um no again like we covered sense of jeopardy i mean you know i mean like the the kids are a little bunch of murder hobos that all they want to do is roll dice and kill shit. So, uh, you know, it kind of hurts when shit starts killing back. <laughs> so. Good point, David. Uh, Blake, final thoughts. Damn, he's thinking hard. He's thinking hard. You're still cutting out. Oh, okay. Say so my final thought is I should have fucked old what's her name. <laughs> Probably should have. And Frank, your final thoughts for this evening. Uh, World changing offense and how to build the tension in your players. Go. Uh, disagree with Blake. No, you shouldn't have fucked her. Agree with David. Yes, tension is the key because, you know, when you play a game, there's got to be a little bit of tension there. It's what keeps you moving forward. Uh, and if you want to see, particularly this Saturday, uh, in a oh, very... Actually, that brings me into my actual final thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. Uh, a very tense moment. Uh, we're going to do another planar adventure. It's going to be 10th level. We have three of the four seats uh Already uh, wanting, spoken for, if you will. Uh, but we will try and make do with what we can. So if you're interested in having a seat, let us know. If you want to have a seat here with these guys uh, on a Tuesday, let us know. We will get you in here because I can always use a rest. Also, the last thing I'm going to say is uh, at dice underscore pirate. Coming to you soon. Uh, you'll see. Oh, did we have a bingo? Nope, this, uh, this will be our uh, producer's dice uh, oh. account. So my final thought is tension. Bring it, bend it, will it. And scene. Oh, no. <laughs> so my final, no, my final thought was just don't, don't beat a dead horse. Uh, Know, know the difference between when something's getting stale and when something does need to be ramped up. Agree. Sure. Yep. Now, you, now you can cut me out, Carrie. Dang it. <laughs> Carrie, you should have done this sooner. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, buy our stuff. La 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 la.